Hey everyone. So one of the most common texture tutorials I get asked to do a lot is uh, showing how to draw scales. And I actually did one a couple years ago, but I decided I would do an updated video sharing some quick tips and how to draw scales with pen and ink. And of course, I have to thank each and every one who has grabbed a copy of my books, Pen and Ink Drawing, A Simple Guide in Pen and Ink Drawing, the workbook. And also, I will be continuing that series where I basically kind of go over some of the exercises in this book. And as I had mentioned before, this one teaches the concepts, and this one is pretty much uh, the exercises where you apply what you learned here. Although uh, both um, or either one can be used independently, you know, I do believe that they're best used um, together as complementary text. All right. So thanks everyone who has grabbed a copy. And thanks also for everyone who has taken the time to leave a review and give some feedback. I really appreciate it. And it really means a lot. It makes a big difference to share the word. And, uh, you know, just to uh, at least give some some uh, testimony to what the book uh, meant to you or, or if you found it useful or not. All right. So <laughs> thanks, everyone. And I really appreciate it. Now realize that scales are just another type of texture, right? So as such, uh, we use the same approach that I've always shared with you guys before, right? So that means I'll break down the process so we can look at uh, the form, uh, contour, shading, and in the end, just put them all together. And remember this approach, you know, and technique can be applied to drawing all kinds of subjects with scale. Uh, snakes, lizards, dragons, alligators, reptiles, or whatever creatures you want to invent from your imagination. So a common mistake I generally see people make when drawing scales or just uh, textures in general is that they forget that the texture is supposed to follow the cross contour of the form that they cover. So as I generally say all the time, you know, textures are not flat patterns, all right? So whether you're uh, uh, drawing scales that cover legs or tail or the body, we must envision the form they are wrapping around. You know, so it's useful to sketch the underlying form as a three-dimensional shape. And this way you can envision how the scales will change direction or shape as they wrap around that form. So whether the form is actually twisting or turning, the point is that you try to envision the underlying mass, the three-dimensional shape that that texture or the scales will be covering. Now, from looking at scales, it's obvious that they follow a particular pattern, right? So a key to drawing scales well is that you use some type of a grid that makes it easy to create that pattern. So basically, when you're done, all you're doing is pretty much just drawing your scales on top of it. To make sure that your, uh, your scales seem to have some uniformity, right? You make the pattern consistent by trying to make your lines kind of evenly spaced. It doesn't have to be exact or, or geometric, but it's important to have some, some kind of uh, even distribution in the spacing between the grid, all right? Now, another thing is to remember that animals are fluid. They're living forms. You know, they have moving, twisting masses. So instead of using just uh, straight lines, kind of um, uh, make your grid uh, be based on using curved lines. So give the grid lines a slight S curve, like the line of balance. And then just practice using different forms, like uh, cylindrical forms or tapering forms, you know, curving forms and so on. And this will give you some good practice in how to actually adapt scales to whatever forms you're confronted with. Shading scales can be a bit tricky. Now, first, remember that scales are actually overlapping forms. Now, whenever you have overlapping forms, generally, the form that's being overlapped will have some degree of shadow. So as far as uh, scales are concerned, it's important to show some indication of shadow where uh, scales are being overlapped and also where uh, neighboring scales will actually meet. And this will do a lot to add some dimension to your scales. Now, the next thing is, remember that as a form turns from light to shadow, different parts of it will receive different amounts of light. So as for the scales that actually cover that form, the same effect will apply. So that means scales will receive different amounts of light based on where on the form they are. So the scales in shadow will be mostly covered in shadow, right, with a thin rim of light, because remember, scales do have some thickness. And then as the uh, form turns into light, there will be less and less shadow uh, 
until there is literally no shadow on the scales that are in light. So now we're gonna have some fun and apply the tips we just learned and you'll see how this will take effect. So you see guys, I'm basically using the same strategy that I discussed before. I'm imagining this form as three dimensional. So the scales are actually wrapping around this form. And now as I actually um, drew the grid and then placed the scales on the grid and then rendered or you know, created that gradation to show that transition from shadow to light and light to shadow. And essentially, this is all I'm doing. Imagine that you have um, a series of scales just like this. And the scales that are in shadow, I'm basically making sure all of the scale, pretty much all of it, is in shadow. And as it goes closer to light, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the areas closer to shadow is being covered. And then as it moves around towards the light, then I start spacing out my strokes until less and less of the scale is covered. In certain areas, you notice that I actually don't put any marks at all. And that's essentially what I'm doing. And as I said, uh, the scales overlap, so I make sure that there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of shadow in between these areas where the the scales overlap. And you're just basically repeating this simple <laughs> technique. So you you're trying to make sure that in the shadow areas, each scale is mostly covered. And I pretty much just leave this little area like this, a little edge. And what that does is it helps to give each scale a sense of, of depth. It's almost like um, you're imagining a line that moves like this. Let me see. Okay guys, so I hope you found something in this that you found useful that you can apply to your drawings. And uh, remember to give the video a thumbs up, guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that so you can 
uh, be notified when there are new uploads. And as usual, thanks for watching. Keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.